The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency arraigned the suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abakari, and six others today, March 7th, at the Federal High Court, Abuja. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, the Vatican has sent two senior Catholic cardinals to the war ravaged Ukraine to provide humanitarian support. The Vatican revealed that Konrad Kraduski, a 58-year-old Pole, is already on his way to the Ukrainian border with Poland to talk with refugees and helpers, while Michael Cheney, a 75-year-old Canadian, is expected in Hungary on Tuesday, where he is expected to also meet with refugees. Pope Francis announced the trips on Sunday. At number 9, operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have intercepted 294,440 tablets of tramadol, diazepam, suinol, rifinol, and exol-5, along with other illicit drugs in major operations in Delta, Bauchi, and the Mutala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, Lagos State. According to a statement released on Sunday by NDLA Director, Media and Advocacy, Femi Baba Femi, a total of 41 suspects were arrested in raids in Abuja and Kaduna State. In Delta, one Christian owner was arrested at Ishele Azaba Junction with 23,160 tablets of Swinol and 66,000 tablets of Rufinol, both weighing 71.6 kg, while conveying the drugs from Benin Edo to Onicha, Anambra State. At number 8, the Nigerian army has disclosed that 17 Boko Haram and Islamic State of West Africa province terrorists were killed in Damasak when they attacked a forward operational base in Bornu State. Operation Hadin Kai's theater commander of the Northeast Joint Task Force, Christopher Musa, made this known in Medugri. The commander said the troops arrested three terrorists alive, adding that motorcycles and weapons were seized from the terrorists. Musa noted that the terrorists attacked the forward operational base located along the Walada exit gate in the town at about 2 a.m., where they met fierce resistance from the troops. At number seven, the governor of Niger State, Abubakar Bello, is set to take over as the chairman of the Ketika and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee for the All Progressives Congress. It was gathered that Governor Bello arrived at the national headquarters of the APC on Monday to hold an emergency meeting with some members of the caretaker committee of the party. The governor also confirmed this on Twitter where he wrote, I am currently presiding over the caretaker and extraordinary convention planning committee of the APC at the national secretariat of the party. The meeting is to reportedly implement President Muhammad Buhari's directive to remove the governor of Yobe State, Mai Malabuni, as the chairman of the ruling party's caretaker committee. But in a statement released on Monday, the APC National Publicity Secretary, Senator James Akpan Odoidege, said no leadership change has been effected in the CECPC of the party. At number six, the National Association of Academic Technologists has threatened to embark on indefinite strike action if by March 31st, the federal government fails to address the lingering grievances of the union. This is coming at a time the Academic Staff Union of Universities is also on strike. NAT's indefinite strike threat was contained in a statement signed by its National Secretary, Abu Bakar Yusuf, and read by the branch chairman of NAT, Michael Okbara University of Agriculture, Umudike, Comrade Kenneth Nwaji, during a press briefing on Monday in the university. At number five, the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has restrained the National Assembly from tampering with the newly amended Electoral Act 2022. The restraining order issued on Monday by Justice Inyang Ekwo followed a motion ex parte that was brought before the court by the People's Democratic Party. In the ruling, the court specifically barred all the defendants in the suit marked FHC slash ABJ slash CS slash 247 slash 2022 from removing section 84 subsection 12 of the Electoral Act or preventing it from being implemented for the purpose of the 2023 general elections. Recall that before President Muhammad Buhari signed the Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2022 into law, he asked the National Assembly to remove Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Act, which he argued would disenfranchise seven political appointees. At number four, the price of crude oil on Monday hit $130 a barrel, the highest since July 2008, and after the United States and European allies 
considered banning the importation of Russian oil in protest against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Brent crude futures jumped $12.61 or 10.6% to $130.72 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate climbed $10.41 or 9% to $126.09. Russia is the world's second largest oil producer, mostly selling its crude to European refineries. But on Sunday, the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said the U.S. and its European allies are exploring banning Russian oil imports. At number three, Oluwa Bamishe Ayanwola, the 22-year-old lady who got missing after boarding a bus rapid transit vehicle in Lagos State, has been found dead. The deceased relatives confirmed this on Monday. It was learned that her corpse was dropped on Lagos Island by a BRT vehicle and a jeep. Upon sighting the cops by the roadside, an unknown man reportedly informed officials of the Ebutero police station on Saturday evening. The cops was later taken to the mainland hospital mortuary. Ayawala got missing while returning to Ota from Aja on Saturday, February 26, when she boarded a BRT bus with number 240257 going to Oshodi at about 7 p.m. at Chevron bus stop. However, the driver of the BRT bus, identified as Nice Andrew, has been arrested by the police shortly after the death of Bamisha was made public on Monday. At number two, the federal government has expressed its disapproval of the ongoing registration of Nigerian citizens volunteering to join the Ukrainian army to resist the invasion of the country by Russia. Following the call by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky for people around the world to join the fight against Russia, over 150 Nigerians showed up at the embassy of Ukraine in Abuja last week to volunteer to be recruited. Reacting to this in a statement on Monday, the spokesperson for the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Francisca Amayuli, said the federal government would not tolerate the recruitment. According to her, the federal government would engage with the Embassy of Ukraine in Nigeria and other relevant authorities to prevent this. Finally, at number one, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency arraigned a suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abakari, and six others today, March 7th, at the Federal High Court, Abuja. NDLA arraigned Kari before Justice Emeka Umute on an eight count criminal charge bordering on conspiracy and drug trafficking. There was mild drama when the charge was read to the accused in court. While DCP Abakari, ACP Sunday J. Ubia, ASP James Bauer, Inspector Simon Agiriba, Inspector John Nuhu, who are all suspended police officers, pleaded not guilty. The two other co-defendants, Chibuna Patrick Umeibe and Emeka Alphonsus Ezenwane, pleaded guilty. NDLA accused Kerry and the four other police officers of conspiracy, obstruction and dealing in cocaine worth 17.55 kilograms. They were also accused of tampering with 21.25 kg of cocaine unlawfully. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.